When an architect decides to build a building, he or she doesn't just start building. It has to be designed first. It requires blueprints. And if the building is especially tall, it requires several hundred blueprints. Same goes for game developers. They don't simply envision some epic game and then immediately begin playing it. Ridiculous, and any serious developer would be offended if that was all that you thought they did. To connect this analogy, blueprints for game designers are APIs. Application Programming Interfaces. DirectX as we know it today is a library packed full of APIs, and without it, most of the games you likely play wouldn't exist. Let's start off with API. In short, picture a district attorney by the name of, I don't know, Sam. Sam represents the video game coder. Sam's been practicing law for 20 years, but he doesn't know everything. Every now and then he has to refer to state and federal law books to ensure that he's properly prosecuting. These laws are essentially the codes by which he must abide, and venturing outside of these guidelines could be catastrophic for his particular case or even career. You get no argument from me there. But if your obstruction allows a massacre to happen, I will crucify you, Mr. Kralik. I will charge you with negligent homicide, and after I convict you, I will resign my job and represent the families of the victims in a wrongful death suit against you and the union. By the time I'm done, you'll be finished. Much in the same way, an application programming interface is a guide that programmers should follow when designing video games around a particular platform. And in the case of DirectX, that platform, or operating system rather, is Windows. Now, DirectX in and of itself isn't a single API, it's actually a collection of them. Rules and regulations, if you will, for various media, including audio, video, and games. Direct Sound, Direct Play, and Direct 3D have all been integral APIs of DirectX in the past. However, for the sake of this video, and for the sake of gaming, we'll be focusing primarily on Direct 3D, as it's the API responsible for 3D graphics generation. When a developer utilizes Direct 3D, he or she is opening up a world of endless possibilities. The API allows for the utilization of onboard and discrete graphics, which we'll discuss more detail in just a sec, making for a user-friendly 3D interface. Perfect for game coders who require visual representations of what they're actually coding in the API. Direct3D is currently at odds with OpenGL, a similar 3D graphics API, although most of what you'll see today and play today will rely on DirectX. Speaking of which, how does DirectX take advantage of graphics hardware? Is DirectX partial towards one graphics card manufacturer or the other? And what is the difference, or what are the differences, between DirectX 11 and DirectX 12? Let's start with question one. How does DirectX take advantage of graphics cards? It's actually quite simple. When a programmer writes a code within Direct3D that requires a solid sphere, let's say, to rotate, Windows will utilize the DirectX 3D API to instruct the primary display device, typically a dedicated graphics card, to execute the program code. For instance, the code may require the use of shader pipelines within a GPU. I discuss processor pipelines in more detail in the video right here. It may also request that anti-aliasing hardware and other blending effects begin working at a hardware level to generate the rotating sphere. And as long as the graphics card in question is relatively new and not a potato when it comes to gaming performance, these commands will be executed almost instantaneously and without fail. If, however, your card was not designed with either DirectX 11 or 12 in mind, Windows, and in the case of DirectX 12, Windows 10, will inform you that no discrete display adapter is available to utilize that API. Picture it like a foreign language that your graphics card cannot comprehend nor interpret. If good old District Attorney Sam can't read his own law books, how on earth is he supposed to prosecute? Now let's tackle question two. Is DirectX partial towards one graphics card manufacturer? Well, in all fairness, this question is actually worded a bit incorrectly. Since DirectX, particularly Direct3D, and graphics cards are always evolving and always improving, it's difficult to gauge whether the display card manufacturer or the API developers are at fault per se at any given time. In the case of DirectX 11, it has been noted that Nvidia takes the cake in especially moderate resolutions, 1080 and 720p. This, however, is not the fault of DirectX, but rather the fault of AMD. Don't shoot me, Red fans. Just hear me out. Things will get better for you. GC and architecture heavily favors something known as parallelism, in which several thousand graphics cores handle large workloads simultaneously. But in order to do this efficiently, GCN demands a great deal of CPU horsepower to feed the graphics card information. If the CPU has rather weak cores, or simply not enough of them, the AMD counterpart will suffer to a greater extent under the DirectX 11 library, which was designed to fully utilize a maximum of two cores. 
This is why owners of AMD graphics cards attest to Intel CPUs yielding much higher frame rates than their AMD counterparts. Since Intel CPUs have higher IPCs and generally stronger single cores than, let's say, the FX lineup from AMD, they're able to process and send more data to the hungry OpenCL frameworks of AMD GPUs. Essentially, the less extreme the CPU bottleneck, the more advantageous owning an AMD graphics card becomes. From NVIDIA's standpoint, CUDA technology is designed to process and execute in a much more linear pattern benefiting platforms with a greater deal of CPU overhead, i.e. DirectX 11. Since CPUs are designed to process data swiftly in small, diverse chunks, and since CUDA is designed to handle serial operations at a generally faster rate than that of OpenCL, NVIDIA edged out additional DirectX 11 performance gains, whereas AMD was crippled by its rather far-fetched and futuristic technology. However, DirectX 12 and the new Direct3D API have sought to change that. In comes question 3. How exactly are DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 different? Well, as DirectX has evolved from its early 2 and 3 versions up to its preteen years, hardware overhead has dramatically increased, but this is actually on purpose. Graphics cards are growing more and more powerful by the second. Every new release is a giant leap forward, the GTX 1080 is a prime example. Now, what DirectX 12 seeks to do, primarily, is two things. Bestow a substantially larger deal of graphics rendering responsibilities directly upon the CPU and increase the number of fully utilized CPU cores. This reduces CPU bottlenecking and latency, obviously, while at the same time maximizing graphics card hardware. Asynchronous compute comes to mind, but that is for an entirely separate crash course. You gonna, you gonna take it? DirectX 12 is also the reason that many assume the FX lineup, notably the FX 6300 and the FX 8350, would have a sudden resurgence thanks to their many integer cores. And while this may be the case in theory, we have yet to fully understand how the 12th version of Direct3D utilizes these relatively weak cores. As more DirectX 12-based games are released, this should become more clear. But in the case of graphics processing, DirectX 12 undeniably favors AMD. This isn't just coming from a scientific standpoint, but real-world observations out there as well. In this scenario, it's the API that favors the graphics hardware, although you could look at this from a different perspective, that NVIDIA's CUDA technology wasn't changed to a great enough degree to benefit from DirectX 12 in the same way AMD has, who saw this coming 10 years ago. Regardless, AMD has the edge this time around, and that's thanks to fully realized asynchronous compute hardware, reduced driver overhead, and maximized parallelism. 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 If you liked what you saw in this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down if you feel the complete opposite, or if you hate everything about life, be sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Stay tuned for more Crash Courses here on the channel. Sorry folks, no GTX 1060 stuff today. I guess we're just not glorious enough to be noticed by Nvidia at this point. We'll change that, hopefully, at some point, but for now, at least your pros on DirectX, right? This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.